This is the all-in-one 10-inch Raspberry Pi screen. Works for Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, 4, and it is great. 1080p touch screen. I'm really digging this one. Super easy setup. Works with a ton of things, including retro games. Let's check it out. It does everything from Raspberry Pi 1 all the way to Raspberry Pi 4. Come on, Vivian. So here's our screen. Check out the cooling on that. Tell me that's not cool. Tell me that's not cool. And then we got uh, five buttons on the back. Power, menu, up, down, and back. Even It looks like it's also VESA mountable. Like You see those screw holes? Those are VESA mountable. And then you got the little the little kickstand. Nice. All right, you got um, a USB cable to the motherboard, a, a screwdriver. You got your power adapter. Looks like it's not drawing much power at all. It's got low power consumption. You got HDMI. You've got USB-A to C. You've got some adapter plates, I.O. plates. You got USB-C to USB-C. And then what the hell are these? I have no idea what these are. These look like little sensors. And then the user manual. So as far as the build here, take off six screws off the back of the uh, device here, get a Raspberry Pi ready. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4. And then those little adapter plates, I, I thought they were sensors before. Those are just adapter plates to get the HDMI and the power connected to the board. And then the upper left corner, if you're looking down at this device on the back, there's the touchscreen hookup. You have a couple ways of hooking that up. You can check the manual. The easy way is just go USB to the Pi. You mount the Pi in there with four screws and then uh, you just get everything together. Here's a close-up of everything as far as how it looked on mine uh, to get it all going. Uh, there's only one fan on it and it's already hooked up. Uh, the other hole is an exhaust hole. All right, as far as your menu items, you have the picture, you got brightness and contrast. As you can see, we were running at 100% and 50% uh, contrast the whole time. Uh, you have display, you change the aspect ratio, the touch rotation. Uh, the fan control, you see, I think I click it here, yeah. And just is off and on. It's whether you want the fan on or off. <laughs> There's no like controlling it speed wise. Um, it's just, do you want your fan on or not? Um, if you're not putting a Raspberry Pi on it, you turn the fan off, right? Why well, have that extra noise? The Raspberry Pi is inside of it. I'd run the fan. Then you have some uh, rotations and things like that. The signal source. Remember <laughs> Woo! This looks really good. Hey, let's kill somebody here. Oh, got her. No, I wanted to shoot her with a rocket. You want to do it too? Yes. Great. Here we go. The last lap, there's the dinosaur and... First place. Now we're using my Ooh. Samsung S10 through USB Type-C to USB Type-C connection. You can see it went straight into Samsung DeX, which is a desktop for my phone. But uh, yeah, any phone that can take USB Type-C uh, video format, it'll work on this. And then, you know, if the USB Type-C also has the touchscreen control, which it does with my phone, then here you go. If it doesn't have touch controls, you can control it through your phone still. Uh, but video playback on my Samsung S10 is light years ahead of the Raspberry Pi and uh, you get access to all your apps and everything else. It, it works great as a you know portable monitor, not just for the Pi. You can hook up a laptop or a phone. Now here we are on the actual Raspberry Pi again, like we were earlier when we were retro gaming. And this time I'm on a uh, Pixel on a stock image. I entered my Wi-Fi in 
And I did attach a keyboard, but I'm pretty sure you can get a virtual keyboard to keep it a little slimmer setup. And then uh, here I am playing some USB games. And, uh, you know, here's me playing skee ball with uh, touch controls. But uh, most people aren't going to play games like this. I just wanted to do it to kind of test out how sensitive the touch controls and how accurate they were. They were good. They weren't amazing. They weren't bad. They were good. And um, most of you, though, are, you know, the DIYers, the people that really want this unit, I feel it's going to be like the really cool usage of these, in my opinion, is the maybe a, a portable uh, arcade and or, you know, you're using it to shoot photos or using it with 3D printers. You're using it for some sort of auxiliary screen, which is part of a larger like tinkering project. I would just think that that's just a way better use of this particular setup. If you're going to just be retro gaming or you're going to just be watching movies, you're probably going to want, you know, like a monitor or something like that, which I talk about shortly here. But, um, you know, for pixel and touchscreen, yeah, it works exactly as advertised and it's a nice cooling and nice little setup. Okay, whether you want to turn your Raspberry Pi into a tablet or connect your smartphone or any device via USB, um, you can even do HDMI, so you can go ahead and do that. Um, the USB Type-C will give you touchscreen controls on whatever device you're on. HDMI will not, you're gonna need both. You can also hook up headphones as well. Uh, you can also rotate the screen as well, depending on the the device you would be you don't rotate you rotate this screen but the device you're on if you're on a cell phone for example you just turn the cell phone or if you're on a desktop computer like a windows 10 you go to display settings you can just rotate the desktop and display settings by right clicking on your desktop and uh, then you get all the touchscreen controls as well as long as your laptop takes a usb type c and you can get those touch inputs to go between devices so this is a portable screen in many you know, i've reviewed portable screens all the time it is 1080p which is awesome and then the fact that it has a fan don't forget it has a fan on this side an intake and then this is the exhaust fan here so it's um or actually this is the intake this is out it's going out it's pushing hot air out um so air comes in hot air comes out it comes in many different resolutions. You can save some money if you want a lower res. I wanted 1080p, so then all my gaming images would work on it. Um, you know, I would probably recommend the same. And uh, the screen itself is super bright. I'm really, really liking the screen. Big bezel, as you see, but you know, I like the portability. I like the project idea of it. Um, I would, if it was me, I'd rather go with like a 15.6 inch or something larger for a portable screen. But for this type of thing, it, it does the trick. You know, just keep your, you know, depending on your application, there may be better solutions out there. But this one is definitely one to consider. That's what I think. Let me know you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the next one.